World War I had about 1.5 million Indians fighting in every theater of the battle. Most of them were in infantry or cavalry. Only a few were in air force. Among the handful of Indians who fought in the air was a gifted combat pilot who would go on to become India's first fighter ace, Indralal Lady Roy. Hello person next to the screen. Welcome to Much to Learn from History. You are me and you are watching. This forgotten pilot was just 19 when he became India's first and only flying ace in World War One. The second son of Pera Lal Roy and Lolita Roy. Indra Lal Roy was born in Calcutta on December 2, 1898. The Roy family had a history of illustrious individuals. His father was a highly respected barrister who served as the director of public prosecution and his maternal grandfather Dr. Surya Kumar Chakraborty was one of the first Indian doctors to be trained in Western medicine while his elder brother Varish Lal Roy served in the army's artillery battalion would later go on to known as the father of Indian boxing. A nice family background I guess. So continuing from here, 1901 Roy family comes to land. He was still in this school when World War One was a thing. He erupted on July 28, 1914. Determined to do his bid, he signed up for the cadet force at his school, the 400-year-old St. Paul's School for Boys at Hammersmith. The bright teenager also designed a trench mortar, trench mortar, and sent the design to the war office along with notes on its advantage. Impressed by his academic records and innovative design, Roy was awarded a scholarship by Oxford University. However, the young boy, affectionately known as Laddie by his friends and families, had another dream in his eyes, becoming a fighter aircraft pilot. As soon as he could, he applied to the Royal Flying Corps as Royal Air Force RF was nothing till now. It was nothing till now, literally it was not found till now, but he was rejected on the grounds of defective eyesight. Now, with the sheer determination, he sold his motorbike to pay for a second opinion from one of the Britain's leading eye specialists at this time. This time, he cleared the eye test and successfully appealed to Royal Flying Corps to overturn his rejection. Five months after turning 18, on 4th April 1917, he joined RFC and was commissioned as a second lieutenant on 5th July. After training and gunnery practice, he joined number 56 squadron on 30 October. Now, this squadron flew the iconic SE-5 scout fighters. And if you look in the pictures of World War One, especially in the Indian combat, uh, it is more likely that you find this aircraft in the photo because it was, you know, iconic. That's why. That information with you. Now, Roy was a part of a flight commanded by Captain Richard Mayberry, who himself was a flying ace with 21 aerial victories till the war wages on and was awarded bar to military cross. On July 5, popular among his fellow pilots for his youthful exuberance, Roy was soon flying his plane in the skies above Vendome in France. Yes, that's often, often doing daring maneuvers far beyond his age and experience, it was during this time on December 6, 1917, that he suffered a crash after a plane was shot and shot down by a German fighter. Sorry for that. Now, if uh, this thing was true or not, it cannot be confirmed because there are no sources which can deny or it can accept the fact that he was shot on the German fighter. So, we are just thinking that it's in the mysterious circumstances. Now, he was badly injured and unconscious Roy was moved to local hospital where he was taken for dead and laid out in the morgue. On regaining consciousness, yes, he was alive. 
take any consciousness he banged loudly on the moth door while shouting on his out in his school by french i guess whoever was there in duty would have peed in pants just think you were doing just think about this you bring a lifeless body from a battle field from a battle field okay who had to fallen from thousands of feet and saying hola i didn't saw that well let's move away from my pages after the door was finally opened by the terrified hospital staff the boy who had come back from the dead listen that thing carefully who had came back from the dead <laughs> was promptly sent back to England for further treatment. While recovering from the crash, he spent his time making numerous sketches of aircraft, many of which are now displayed at Indian Air Force Museum in Delhi. After his accident, Roy had been declared unfit to fly. This is stubborn and was determined to return to the skies. Bestowed his senior till finally came in. He was transferred to Captain George McClory's flight in number 40 squadron in june 1918 that had been formed two months earlier by merging rfc and rna which is royal naval air service interestingly captain george edward henry mcclory was restored by military crosses two bars distinguished flying cross and bar and uh, he was the leading irish fighter pilot in air ace of rfc and rf during world war one He was credited with 47 aerial victories. Now, what is ace? So, ace is so uh, basically those pilots who had been accounted, or they have been uh, noted that they have at least five kills or at least have five victories. Now, victories here means either destroy the plane or make it uncontrollable. So, now to this extent. it was confirmed that okay so here judge captain george edward henry mcclory was have at least 47 aerial victories means that uh, he was credited with 47 malfunctioning of enemy's aircraft either he destroyed it or just made it uncontrollable now more focused than ever before roy was determined to train harder and become one of the best fighter pilot in the rf within a month he brought down his first german plane during a skirmish in northern france le france this was just the beginning of his exemplary career as a combat pilot over the next two week roy achieved 10 victories becoming india's first flying ace in just over 170 hours of flying time now let's be real if you have your course book you cannot read a whole course book you cannot master a whole course book in 170 hours he just mastered and he just got 10 victories within 170 hours of flying time now this brilliant spell included three victories over fokker t7s now this fokker t7s are the legendary german combat aircraft considered so threatening that it handover was made compulsory under the armistice agreement between the germany and the allied powers after the war after the war was completed now let's see this victory in detail now the aircraft which lal roy was flying was se5a and its serial number was b180 now i'm just saying dates and opponent result and location and if there are certain notes i will also say On 6th of July 1918, uh, his opponent was a Hanover C. Result between the fighting was the Hanover C was left out of control. The location was Drocourt. July 1918, Hanover C out of control, Drocourt. 8 July 1918, Hanover C out of control, east of Montreal. July 1918, Fokker T7 out of control, south east of Douai. Now. Four of this, 8 July 1918, 9:25 uh, was uh, when he bought on a Hanover C plane, a uh, uh, fighter plane, uh, in east of the Monchi. It was shared with Captain George McClory and Lieutenant Gilbert Strange. 
now moving on 13th 1918 13th July 1918 the opponent was Hanover Sea and the result of this skirmish was that Hanover Sea was obliterated and destroyed it happened in west of Asteris in the skies of west of Asteris it was shared with Captain George McClory and Lieutenant Gilbert, uh, Gilbert Strange and F.H. Knobel now 13th July 1918 and um, was opposed by P. Pulse B3. Uh, the result was that the opponent plane was destroyed. It happened on the skies of Victory Breguet's. On 15 July, he had his two kills, and both of them were Fokker D7. One was destroyed, another was one out of control, and it happened in the skies of Polo. On 18th July 1918, the FWCV was the opponent. It was destroyed in the southeast of Paris. Now 19th July 1918, Hanover Sea destroyed in the skies of Cagney. Now, unfortunately, the talented pilot didn't survive the whole war. Roy was shot down on July 22, 1918, when his plane was attacked by four Fokker D7s during a daring sortie. The good sea pilot fought back with all he had, taking down two of the enemy fighters. However, hit by relentless gunfire from Fokker D7, his plane burst into flames before crashing into German controlled territory. He was just 19 years old when he breathed his last. And see here, at 19, we generally think like most important and stupidious questions like Sidi Lizasu, what to wear, and most important and stupidious, what is my spirit animal? It might be our or donkeys. Sorry. Now, such was the brave Indian teenager's reputation as the pilot that even Red Baron Manfred von Richthofen, the celebrated German flying ace, paid him a tribute by dropping a breath from the skies at the spot where his plane went crash. Did you believe that? Me neither. Now, let me admit, Buster, Red Baron was killed three months prior to his death, that is 21st April 1918. In September 1918, Lady Roy was posthumously decorated with Distinguished Flying Cross, the third topmost award to be given to a pilot in British Empire, and he was the first Indian to be bestowed with that honor. Citation reads, A very gallant and determined officer, who in 13th day accounted for nine anime machines in this several engagement, he had displayed remarkable skills and daring, on more than one occasion accounting for two machines and one patrol. Angel Al Roy was buried at Estevez Communal Cemetery, about 100 km north of the grave of another Indian combat pilot of World War I, Lieutenant Sri Krishna Bellinkar. His grave bears a simple inscription in Bengali that reads Mahabirir Samadhi Sabhundraham Tikhau Sparsh Corona. In English, it loosely translates that this grave is of a courageous warrior. Expect it, not touch it. Now, uh, let's uh, move to his generation. Now you know that he was only 19, so it, he didn't um, have friends. Now that he married, so Indralal Roy's nephew, Subrata Mukherjee, also served as fighter pilot during World War II and went on to become first chief of air staff of the Indian Air Force. And also, Indralal elder brother Parish was NDTV founder of Pranay Roy, paternal grandfather. So, that's for all today. Please leave the comment, like it and subscribe and share. It was my first video. So please tell me how I did it and if there are certain things which I can improve. I am glad to hear those. So please leave a comment and please like and please share with others. And please tell which one to do next. Because there are more people who are unrecognized. So, be glorious bastard. One day.